a drink. So God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became a archer. Does everybody see that? He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him, the land of Egypt. Now, we know Egypt represents world. So he was connected with the world. Even though he was the seed of Abraham, but he was not the seed, the promised seed. Amen? So even that seed head could speak. Is everybody with me? Ishmael was a seed out of God's timing. Say out of God's timing. Isaac was a seed of God's timing. Does everybody see this? Amen. That's why many believers are producing Ishmael's instead of Isaac's. Because they're moving and doing things out of God's timing and expecting God to move on their behalf. And that's all they're doing is producing Ishmael's instead of Isaac's. Is everybody okay? Go to uh, 22, chapter 22 and verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son. Say your only son. Because he no longer considered Ishmael his son anymore. Oh. Whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I tell you. Now you got to understand something because this is powerful because God was not testing Abraham on the area of of his son he was testing abraham on the area of whether god, he believed god to be the that a, uh, isaac was the promised seed or not amen is everybody okay so abraham rose early in the morning and settled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which god had told him go to verse 13 Everybody there? Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. And he said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have what? Obeyed my voice now i want you to understand something one of the things that prevent the seed from being stolen or killed or destroyed is obeying the voice of god hello that seed will grow and prosper if you are obedient is everybody okay if you are what obedient Woo, yeah so we see here that the truth, when God spoke to Abraham, the truth, that seed of truth took root. Abraham was willing to kill Isaac because he believed what God had said. It was actually accounted to him for righteousness. Amen? Because he moved by faith, not by assumption, because he did what God said. And in this, his seed, the seed of truth, was rooted in Abraham believed, and he was willing to kill his son because he knew that if he killed his son, God would have to raise him again from the dead. Why? Because he was the promised seed. But then God provided, didn't he? He provided a ram, didn't he? Amen? Because God provides. Now, because Abraham obeyed the voice of God, his seed continued. Is everybody okay? Go to 1 John 3. 
The rooted truth, it's got to get rooted. That seed is truth, and it must be rooted in you. So you're not moved. So you're not swayed by the world. So you're not caught up in yourself. So you're not misled, but you're led by the Spirit. So you don't move out of God's timing. You move according to God's time because you can trust him with all of your heart. See, what has to happen is this seed must move from your head to your heart. That's the only time it begins to take root. It doesn't take root in your head. It takes root in your heart. That's why many believers fall because they've not allowed it to take root. They don't love truth. Hello. You must love the truth. Is everybody there? First John chapter 3. Yeah, let's go there. Sounds good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 7. Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So why was God manifested? Destroy the works of the devil. In other words, destroy the devil's seeds. Why? Because the devil cannot work without planting a seed. Those are called works of the flesh. So we want works of faith, don't we? Verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin for his what? His what? His what? His what? His what? His seed, his truth remains. Does everybody got it? His truth remains in that person. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Hallelujah. His seed remains because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Remember, the seed is the truth eternal. It is the truth eternal. Has everybody got it? It's an eternal truth. And that seed that's imparted in you must take root. It goes from head to heart. And it begins to grow roots. So it gets embedded. Is everybody with me? And Luke 8. Oh, lift your hands to heaven. We need a breeze here. Whew. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. That's a cool breeze, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's an air conditioned breeze. It's heavenly air conditioning. <laughs> Some people go, oh, this is just coincidence. Oh, you're an idiot. You need to get your seed rooted and get rid of the corruptible one. With doubt and fear and unbelief. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Luke 8, 11. Is everybody there? The rooted truth. 